This is Trade Flow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Trade Flow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. OPEC oil output rose in June for a second consecutive month, a Reuters survey found on Tuesday, as higher supply from Nigeria and Iran offset the impact of voluntary supply cuts by other members and the wider OPEC Plus alliance. The OPEC pumped 26.70 million barrels per day, BPD, last month, up 70,000 barrels of oil per day from May, according to the survey based on shipping data and information from industry sources. The increase comes despite OPEC+, Plus, which comprises OPEC and allies such Russia, deciding last month to extend most of its output cuts until the end of 2025 to bolster the market in the face of tepid demand growth, high interest rates and rising U.S. production. Oil prices rose on Wednesday after industry data showed a bigger-than-expected draw in U.S. crude stockpiles, while the market kept tabs on flaring tensions in the Middle East. Brent crude futures edged up 46 cents, or 0.5 percent, to $86.70 per barrel at 0645 GMT. U.S. West Texas intermediate crude futures climbed 42 cents, or 0.5 percent, to $83.23 per barrel. On Tuesday, both benchmarks rose to their highest since the end of April in intraday trading but closed down on the day as fears faded that Hurricane Beryl would disrupt production in the Gulf of Mexico. It is expected to weaken into a tropical storm by the time it enters the Gulf of Mexico later this week, according to the U.S. National Hurricane Center. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. The U.S. Department of Energy said on Tuesday five companies including British oil giant BP and Swiss commodity trader Vitol have been awarded contracts for the sale of one million barrel of gasoline from the U.S. managed stockpile in northeastern states. The sale will help in lowering prices ahead of the U.S. Independence Day holiday, as per the DOE. Five companies responded to invitation for bids announced in May and all of them were awarded the contracts. The remaining winning bidders were George E. Warren LLC, Free Point Commodities and Irving Oil. European spot power prices plummeted on Wednesday on prospects that Germany will receive more than double the wind power volume for the day ahead than that expected for Wednesday. LSEG Research, listing no bullish factors, also showed more renewable supply overall in the region while demand was seen easing. German day ahead baseload was 58.6% euros down per megawatt hour, MWH, by 0740G. M. T. at 37.5 euros, $40.34. The French equivalent contract dropped by 65.5% to trade at 15.0 euros per megawatt hour. German wind generation is likely to hit 23.9 gigawatts, GW, on Thursday compared with 10.0 gigawatts on Wednesday, LSEG data showed. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. Iron ore futures prices rose for a fourth straight session on Wednesday to their highest level in nearly four weeks, supported by firm near-term demand in top consumer China and lingering expectations of more stimulus in coming weeks. The most traded September iron ore contract on China's Dalian Commodity Exchange was up nearly 0.5% at 846 yuan and 50 fen, 116 United States dollars and 39 cents. A metric ton, as of 0233 GMT. It touched a high of 849 yuan a ton earlier in the session, a level not seen since June 7. The benchmark August iron ore on the Singapore exchange was almost 0.6% higher at 110 United States dollars and 60 cents a ton, the highest since June 7. With the clock ticking for the European Commission to impose provisional tariffs on electric vehicles made in China, automakers are bracing for billions of dollars in new costs that analysts expect will slow the European expansion. The bloc is set to confirm on Thursday extra duties of up to 37.6% aimed to prevent a flood of subsidised China-built EVs into the European market, despite last-ditch efforts to strike a deal. China and the European Commission have been in negotiations since last week over the curbs that Beijing and some European automakers want scrapped. 
Beijing rejects accusations that Chinese EVs are unfairly subsidized. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural sector. Chicago corn and soybean futures edged lower on Wednesday and were hovering above multi-year lows as concerns over the condition of U.S. crops were offset by ample supply. Wheat futures rose but were under pressure from a rapidly advancing U.S. harvest and near two-month lows. The most active corn contract on the Chicago Board of Trade, CBOT, was down 0.2% at $4.20 minus one quarter a bushel by 0432 GMT after falling to $3.99 minus one half on Friday, its lowest since 2020. CBOT soybeans meanwhile dipped 0.1% to $11.12 minus one quarter a bushel after having slumped to $10.97, also its lowest since 2020, on Monday. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News, which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.